Midnight had passed, and the intoxicated madness kicked in. We could only crawl along Shalva District's main streets toward downtown. The city's heart beat differently. Ancient buildings were defaced by neon signs and billboards, like half-drunk lovers on a fine leather sofa. Great old houses neighbored by garish modern blocks. A place that makes the head hurt. The Tsar's huge neon sign was visible for miles. A blazing red sign advertised tonight's main attraction, the amazing Natasha. Uh, cops were never welcomed at places like this. They hoped we were too late for the show. We had to be inconspicuous, but it was never easy with this bird mountain by my side. Ah, so this is the famous Czar Club. More like infamous, Marty. It's not for our kind, that's for sure. And I don't mean that they don't like foul here. Well, at least we don't have to be afraid that they see you as a detective, Boss Bird. Very funny, Marty. So what are we gonna do now? We find Natasha, the broad who sent me the message, remember? But first, we need to get into the club. And Marty, please, don't monkey this up. Excuse me? On behalf of the well-respected and noble primate community of Clawville? Cut the crap, Marty. Let's focus on what we're here for, okay? As you say, Boss Bird. I like this. Why is that? I don't know. Cause it's moving, I guess. You're a simple bird, aren't you? Yes, I am. Epur si muave. Oh, bless you. It means, and yet it moves, bird brain. An old wolf named Galileo said that. Oh, I see. And what did he mean by that? Eh, dunno. I think there was something wrong with his stomach. Ouch. Poor oh, bless it me. Oh, eh. ouch. Do you remember when the Clawville Chronicle was a really high quality newspaper? You mean when they wrote something about us daily? Yeah. What exactly happened to them? Yeah, they got bored with us, Marty. And to be honest, so did I. But still, here we are, working together again. Funny, huh? Yeah, hilarious. Tonight? Maybe we'll be on the front page once again. Oh, God forbid. Tonight? Maybe... Whoa, look at that. Isn't that the new... It is, Marty. A brand new 942 Silver Hawk. Haven't seen such beauty since I left Iveria. Of all that's furry, whose is it? Maybe it's Ibn Wessler's. I guess he's no paper tiger. Yeah, he sounds like a fellow who drives around in one of these. Lucky bastard. What a beautiful car. A work of art. Seeing it and thinking about my little rusty cupboard <laughs> breaks my heart. Ah, uh, don't torture yourself, Sonny. Only way we're ever gonna drive one of them is if we sign up for the mob. Maybe it would be worth it. I think we'd be great gangsters in another life. Beautiful car. Yep, as you say, boss. Beautiful car indeed. Eh, not much else to say. Huh, you know, seeing this, I can't wait for the show. The girls? New Year's Eve's once a year, right? And we're not on duty. Have I asked how Laura's doing? 
Whoa, hey, I, <laughs> I was just kidding, okay? My relationship with Laura is unwavering, like the rhino beauty on this picture. Interesting taste you've got. Feathers, scales, or dermal armor, a lady's a lady, my friend. Thank the wild gods for self-sacrificing gentlemen like you. My city is on fire. This is it. It was on the flyer from Deborah. Maybe we'll get to hear it, if we're unlucky. From none other than our secret employer, Natasha Katsenko. Ah, a job with benefits, huh? Ugh, don't be tasteless. Oh, I get it now. The title. Do you think it's about the Great Fire of Clawville? Did you ever think of being a detective? Ah, very funny. My city is on fire. This is it. One day, neon signs will cover the whole world, I'm telling you. You read that in some kind of science fiction book? No, it's just what I think. Oh, so you have your own thoughts now. The world's really moving forward. Pluck off, Sonny. The Czar Club. I'm not gonna forget this buzzing red neon light anytime soon. Hey, that's your old friend, right? Wait, what was his name? Uh, Lawrence? Lamar? No, Liam. Lewis. Yes, it's him. To be honest, Sonny, I always thought that guy's not all there in the head. Nobody's perfectly sane in Clawville, Marty. But if not for this old rabbit, I wouldn't be here today. I'll never forget that. Should I thank him for that? Or kill him for it? You're reading my mind, boss. Is Lucas really such a big fan? Lewis. And yes, he's got the whole Chicken Police book series. Damn his taste. Is Lucas really such a big fan? Sonny, my dear friend. Hi, Lewis. This is my partner. But I'm sure you already know. You have no idea how happy I am to meet you, Mr. Marty. Big admirer of your work. Pleasure's all mine, Lawrence. Lawrence? <clears throat> Anyways, so, the legendary chicken police back together? <laughs> Isn't it amazing news? Don't ruffle my feathers, Lewis. Those days are long gone. We're just here for the entertainment. Or something like that. I see. Well, that's a shame. See you inside? I have something to do, my f f f f f pal, but I'll try to make it for the main event. Okay then, catch you later, pal. Let's not bother him again. Yes, sir. Let's not... Honestly? I think these types of women only see faceless tuxedos, cufflinks, and wallets. And in the mirror, they're just brooches, necklaces, and earrings. Don't be so radical, Marty. They're women. They live by different rules. Hmm, that was kind of deep. It's not. Just bullshit. There's more where that came from. Ooh, teach me, master. When you're old and wise like me, you'll realize none of it is worth a damn thing. Wait, that was deep again, right? Maybe it was, Marty. Maybe it was. Amazing. Let's not bother her. Okay, boss. Jeez, look at that guy. That's not a guy. That's a demon, straight from the dog-eared pages of a cheap detective novel. Yeah, I bet his name's Bill. Nah, he's definitely a Bob. Five bucks for Bill? Okay, I'm in. 
Jeez, look at that. That's not a guy. Howdy, pal. Gentlemen, how can I help you on this wonderful, chilly night? We're expected in the VIP lounge. My apologies, but I don't remember ever seeing you gentlemen here before. May I ask? Now stop right there, big guy. I get it. Yeah, I know exactly how this works. So what do you have to do to get in? Nothing's easier, sir. Are you on the list? The list? Yeah, I've... Uh, uh... Oh, don't tell me you forgot. I'm afraid I did, Marty. Sorry, big guy, but I'm pretty sure we're not on the list tonight. That's a shame. I'm really sorry, sirs. In that case, you can't come in. Yeah, right. Uh, thanks. My pleasure, gentlemen. Jeez, look at... Just one more thing. Uh, this list of yours, uh, where should we sign up again? I'm afraid if you don't know, it's not my place to tell you, sir. Uh, Excusez-moi, uh, the regulations, you know. You hear that, Sonny? I do, Marty. I do. I'm gonna lose my crest from this guy. Just wait. Just don't get too excited, Marty. Not tonight. Anyway, uh, thanks, pal. Yes, gentlemen. Hey, big guy. Uh, what's your name again? My name is Archibald, sir. Archibald Conway. Well, that's not a bob. Excuse me, monsieur. Archib... what? No way, that's not even a real name. I'm sorry to disappoint you, sir, but uh, my name is Archibald Conway, without any doubt. Blackjack Conway, to my friends. Well, thanks, Blackjack. It was a pleasure. We'll be on our way now. Look, I really don't want any trouble, but... It is even more inconvenient for me, sir, but... This place doesn't like, uh, coppers. Forgive this line. I can't let just anybody in, and there are some I am strictly forbidden to. Please, you have to understand. Listen here, you cow. Do you have any idea who we are? You ever read the papers? Of course I know who you are, sir. I read the news and more. And I must admit, it's an honor to meet you in person, Mr. Santino Featherland and Mr. Marty Machikin. The Bell of the Pantheres is one of my favorite books. Oh my god, not the books again. So it would be terribly inconvenient for me if I had to use force on you, gentlemen. What, what did you just say? Relax, Marty. This guy has chicks like you for breakfast. Uh, thanks for the information, pal. Uh, have a nice night. Thank you for understanding, gentlemen. And forgive me for my austere composition. No problem, Shakespeare. Say, big guy, is this your job? To stand in front of the club and keep out decent fellows like us all night? Not entirely, monsieur. My employer has many other kinds of jobs for me. He is quite creative in his field, I must say. Like? Like what? Exactly. Sorry, monsieur. I'm not, uh... Permitted to say anything more about the matter. Regulations, yeah, I know. Uh, this bullshit just gave me a headache. So sorry to hear that, sir. Say, big guy, you know Mr. Lewis Hayworth? But of course. Mr. Hayworth is an impeccable gentleman, and also a frequent visitor of the club. Is that so? Good to know. And? I'm afraid that is all, monsieur. What can you tell me about the first lady of the place, big guy? Uh, you mean Miss Natasha Katsenko, sir? You're right on point, pal. Nothing you don't know already, sir. Just try me. Well, she owns the place. And, uh, that's it? Well, that's, uh, <clears throat> unbelievable. Pardon, monsieur, but I'm not permitted to say anything more. Jeez, look at that guy.
That fella's built like a brick shithouse. I don't think we'll be able to just sneak past him. Wanna bet? Not today, Marty. Remember, we must avoid suspicion. Ah, okay, okay. No trouble. I get it. It's okay, Bertha. Maybe next time. What was that? Uh, nothing. Just the wind. Did you bring Big Bertha with you? Gods, no. What are you thinking? What idiot would bring a shotgun to a club? Was that a rhetorical question? Is Lucas really such a big... Look, Lewis. That bouncer over there. Well, yes. He is a bit intimidating, but his... manners are impeccable. Am I right? Yes, indeed, but it seems tonight we're not on his list. Oh, I see. Uh -um. Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> You'd like to go in, but he won't let you. Yeah, something like that. No, 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 no problem at all. Come with me. I'll t t t talk to him. Much obliged, pal. Yeah, thanks, bunny. Excuse me. Ah, oh, jeez, what the hell's wrong with you, Marty? What? Did I say something wrong? Let's just knock that giant out, shall we? Easy peasy. Let's just not do that, shall we? Okay. Let's just not... Sir! How'd you do? Everything's fine, Mr. Aworth. Good. <clears throat> uh, look, this noble pair of p p pigeons are my friends. They're on the list, okay? Merci la mon, sir. And as for you, <clears throat> you owe me one, g g gentlemen. Thanks, old pal. It was my p p pleasure to help you, as always. The Zark Club welcomes you, gentlemen. Thanks, buddy. The Zark Club welcomes Thanks, buddy. The jazz overwhelmed us. There was no band in sight, yet the music seeped from the walls like years of cigarette smoke and the smell of spilt whiskey. Behind the bar, rows of fancy bottles reflected the harmonious voices of pretty dames and the clinking of crystal glass. It was the kind of place that makes you drunk, even if you've never had a sip. A dangerous place for someone like me. No matter how alien I felt, it was strangely like coming home. Welcome to the Tsar. <laughs> Here we are. Mother of... I take you to the nicest places, eh, sweetheart? Oh, does it mean you're buying, honey? Don't even think about it. Oh, men these days. So, we're here to find a dame called Natasha. I have a hunch she won't be hard to find. Let's mingle and try to avoid suspicion. Just like always. No, Marty, not like always. This time it's for real. fodder guy. He was kind of good in Death of the Horse. <laughs> You've seen every cluckin' movie. You know, Laura and I go to the movies a lot. When was the last time you went? Exactly 12 years ago. Oh, you remember that precisely? Let me guess. Molly? Yep, our very first date. I see. What did you watch? I don't remember. I just remember her. Nothing else. You're a clucking poet. I mean it. 
What weird titles these have. What weird... Ooh, I've seen this. Hicks Poodle plays a private eye, hired to look for a woman, then gets into some kind of blackmail thing that's connected to the first case, and... Hey, uh, Marty? What, yeah? I don't give a shit. It's a classic, and kind of reminds me of the situation we're in right now. How so? I don't know. A mysterious case, a mysterious woman, strange threats, some off-duty investigation. So? Like, think about it. What if, what if we're in a movie, and this whole mess is just fiction? Marty, I think you're having a nervous breakdown. It's a classic. Mm think this is one of those movies where the femme fatale gets everything in the end and the poor detectives left stranded? Yep, just like life. You're old, Sonny. I mean, experienced. Have you ever met a woman like that in real life? Who floors you with a glass and leaves only heartbreak? Well, actually... Oh, I, I didn't mean to... Uh, I'm sorry, Sonny. You're old, Sonny. Huh. Another lupus movie. Jeez. Is there nothing today they're not trying to sell with this guy? Whoa, don't be rude, Sonny. Lupus is a timeless genius. Have you seen Predator City? God, I'm still getting chicken bumps. But wait, who's that next to him? Cassandra Ruby Fay. Nah, never heard of her. Cassandra Ruby Fay. Oh, gods, even her name makes me go weak in the knees. Watch your blood pressure, pal. Don't mind me, just women and guns are my only weakness. Huh, <laughs> no shit. Remember the name, Marty. Cassandra Ruby Fay. Marty, shut up. This guy is certainly not a gangster henchman. Of course he's not. Hey, Marty, I bet you wouldn't dare to go up to him and ask if he hasn't seen your fur coat. What? Why? I'm mad, yeah, but not suicidal. Ah, are you chicken or what? Piss off, old bird. Nah, chicken shit. I know it's not my place, but Laura's father went to that guy when his, you know, problems uh, had gone too far. You're treading on thin ice, Marty. No, I just... <laughs> Look, fellas at the station are talking, you know? All kinds of things. Moses, Plato, Bosco, and the others. Talking, eh? About what? About why Blood Boil took my badge? About what an untrustworthy alcoholic wreck I am? Look, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. Good, and let it stay that way. At least we're cracking this one together, yeah? Sure, Marty. A man's best friend. Uh, that's not a dog, Sonny. That's a horse. He just has a very weird mane. I didn't mean him, Marty. I meant the bar. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah, because that totally makes sense. Don't 
be shy, Sonny. Just ask him for a drink. Still talking to yourself, huh? Great. Don't be shy. Two whiskeys, kid. And no horsing around. I've never heard that one before. Uh, Sonny, you gotta drive, you know? Yeah, you're right, Marty. Hey, Longface, give me a glass of tap water, too, okay? Yes, sir. Coming right up. That wasn't exactly what I meant. Don't be shy. Gentlemen, your drinks. Yeah, uh, sorry, but we have to run. Uh, thanks anyway, Bojack. Ugh, my name is not Bojack. Ah, I tip you, pal, but I don't have any change, so... <sniffs> sure, sir. The Tsar welcomes you back anytime. Sounds good, Bojack. <sighs> Anything else, sirs? Uh, no thanks, Mr. Ed. Keep up the good work. <sighs> Anything else? Tell me, hey Breath, have you seen Natasha tonight? Not yet, sir, but she's coming on soon. Well, can you tell me anything about Mr. Ibn Wessler? Sir, I... I don't want to. What about, let's see, five dollars maybe? But, sir, you haven't even paid for your drinks yet. Yeah, yeah, stop riding on the details, Big Nose. You do your job and we'll do ours, okay? I mean, we're not here for work, of course. We're just here to relax. Oh yeah, exactly. Just a little fun. Of course, gentlemen. A fox is a wolf who sends flowers. What? Oh, nothing. I read it somewhere. Fascinating. I didn't know you could read. Ha ha ha. Very funny. Remember that old case with the fox and the raven? How could I even forget? <sighs> Absurd, right? All that bloodshed for a piece of cheese. Yeah, hunger can bring out the monster in animals, right? And the wildest and most primordial instincts, no matter how civilized they seem. As you say, Marty. Remember that other case with the turtle and the rabbit fella? Oh, gosh, Marty, where do you dig these out? Uh, my mind is a bottomless pit, my friend. Was the rabbit a runner? And that turtle was what, his buddy, or? His dealer, actually. Ah, yeah, you're right. We found the rabbit near the river with a missing leg. Brutal stuff. Two missing legs, actually, but yeah. What happened with the turtle in the end? It's a little bit blurry. Your bottomless pit of a mind is a dark and sad little place. The turtle thought he would run faster if he ate the legs of the rabbit. You know what? This city's seriously fucked up. It is, Marty. Remember that other case? I was hoping to have missed the main event. You're a rusty old cock, that's why. <laughs> so says the little butt jam. But what? That's not even a word. It is now, all because of you. You should feel honored, butt jam. Uh, you know, Sonny, sometimes you're like an evil little child. What is it, butt jam? <laughs> Nothing, old fart. What is it, butt jam?
So, where the hell is Natasha? Well, let's ask that stud over there with those nice gals. Mm, that guy looks way too horny for my taste. Oh, man, your sense of humor is bad as ever. You just need to get used to it again. What if... Ah, uh... oh, this is the life, huh? What's this guy do? Real estate? Mob accountant? Or is he a movie star? He looks like a coat hanger to me. Uh, that was actually worse than the previous joke. Heh, <laughs> I try. Ah, this is the life, huh? What's this guy? She has pretty long legs. I mean, pretty and long legs for a squirrel, but I don't want to be prejudiced. We're not here to stare at pretty squirrels. We're here to investigate, remember? Uh, that girl is looking at me. She's just looking at anyone whose glass is empty, Marty. That's all. Uh, no, 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 Sonny. She was staring at me, like, hard. I saw it. Marty, you're imagining things. Oh, wait a second. You see that, right? She's looking right at us with those big, black, weird squirrel eyes. Okay, Marty, don't panic. Just look elsewhere and walk away slowly. Creepy little squirrel girl. Creepy little squirrel girl. Hey, there's Philmar. Who? Oh, yes. Philmar. Because that's what he calls himself, right? You know him well? We had some seriously wild cases together, yes. Mainly in Averia, way before Clawville. Another place and another life. Sounds good. Like the blurb of some cheap pulp fiction book. Yeah, it was the exact opposite. But the old bird's worth saying hi to. The old hawk looks like shit if you ask me. Just like looking into the mirror. The old hawk looks like sh Well, well, if it isn't the great detective, Marlowe. Blow me, Sonny. You know I don't use that name anymore. Okay. Mr. Dumbass Alias Phil Marlowe. So says someone who tried to go undercover with a Feather Pillow Mafia is a turkey. Right, Mr. Turk Cayman? Hey, that was a long time ago. I was young. And I stick to my principles and my stupidity. Phil Marlowe and that's that. Don't rile me up, you old fart. Okay, okay, fair enough. Sorry, I'm a little clucked tonight. Uh, I know the feeling, pal. By the way, what are you two doing here? You stick out a bit. Are you here for a good old-fashioned beating? We stick out? Man, you look terrible. Like someone who sat on an electric pole. Don't even ask. I feel exactly like that. You want a case? Five feet tall, half of that legs. Angelic voice, demonic eyes. Just the usual. Oh, boy. And you? Something like that. Just don't know the exact numbers yet. A dame named Natasha. She called us here. If I'm not mistaken, the joint is hers. Yeah, she owns the joint, amongst others. Well, good luck, guys. That broad has a reputation. She's not the kind to toy with, if you know what I mean. Any useful information? For free? Stop clucking around, Philmar. All right, but just because of the old days. Look for me after you've talked to her. You wouldn't understand what I have to say about her before then. Don't leave unless you're thrown out, in which case, you know the drill. We don't know each other, I'll deny you in a blink. Good to see you too, old pal. We'll be back. Just one more thing, Philmar. <laughs> I see you haven't changed a bit. Do you think we're walking into a trap? 
You always had good instincts. You know, I couldn't figure out this Natasha woman, even when I worked for her. Then the trouble is bigger than I thought. Just take care of yourselves, and don't leave your guns out of reach. Oh, that's never happened. Yeah, this crazy cock even sleeps with his. You're welcome to the club, Brother Bird. Take care, Phil. You too, old fart. Take care, Phil. You too. Creepy little squirrel girl. That woman with Ibn, I think I know her from somewhere. Maybe in your dreams, pal. Memories are returning. Geez, just spare me the dirty details. Uh, uh, the memory. Isn't that? Yes, it is. The great Ibn Wessler in the flesh. So much for our incognito. You think he noticed us? Only if he's not entirely blind. Ah, uh, great. Just try to act normal as much as you can. Yep, that's him. The big rat in the flesh. Well, it looks like this unpleasant conversation can't be avoided. Just try to act normal. 
Just act nonchalant, my friend. No, it can't be. What now? Is that Olivia? No, Marty. Hey, uh, Olivia. Are you talking to me? It's me, Marty McChicken. Oh, God. What a pleasant surprise. The roaster coppers in person. Chicken police. But yeah, Mr. Wessler, you could say so. The name's... Sunny Featherland, of course, of course. Chicken police. Your partner is, uh... He is, uh... Marty McChicken, sir. I, I just introduced myself to your lady companion seconds ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to see you. Hello, boys. So, to what do we owe this pleasure, gentlemen? Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> we, we were, um, just in the neighborhood, and... Cut the crap, Marty. All right, we're here for your sweetheart, Natasha. Oh, I see. No big deal. Just a blackmail thing. You know, horrifying threats written on the wall with blood-red paint. The usual stuff. You must be familiar with this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, indeed. It's a uh, nasty business. But I didn't know Natasha hired a detective because of this simple matter. But to be honest, I understand. I would have taken matters into my own hands, you see. But I'm kind of busy. Mr. Wessler had a meeting with Attorney General Hamtaro yesterday, so he's rather tired. If you would excuse us. Oh, dear Olivia, it's okay. These gentlemen are just doing their job, right? And if I've heard correctly, they're notoriously thorough. So, how can I help you? We've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'm at your service. Be shy, detective. Ask me anything. All right, Mr. Wessler. Let's see. Don't be shy, detective. Just try to act normal. Nice bunker you got here. Well, thank you, but it's not mine. Not anymore. But I'm sure you already know that. <sighs> Listen, detective. If you want to know something, please ask straight, huh? All right, Mr. Wessler, let's make this a bit more professional. I'm not as exciting as people tend to believe. I grew up in a poor family of many siblings. I'm the only one still alive, unfortunately. My career started with a shoe store, and now, here I am. I wouldn't call that an average life. Shoe store owner to mob boss. How dare you speak to Mr. Wessler like that? Leave it, Olivia, dear. It's just provocation. I'm sorry if I offended you, Mr. Wessler. Shall we talk about something else? Everybody knows Mr. Hayworth. He's an antique piece of furniture in this city so to speak. Only a bit worn out. It's not my fault that he's so much in debt, Detective, but the name of his family still rings quite loud in Clawville. Is that still worth anything? The name is just a name, of course, but the man behind the name is another man, Mr. Fiddleland. You're a pragmatic rat. Thank you. Look, Detective, if you want to know something, just ask. All right, Mr. Wessler. Has your assistant been working for you long? Are you talking about me? Yes, I'm talking about you, ma'am. Let me answer your question, then. I've been in Mr. Wessler's employment for six months. Why do you ask? Oh, just uh, routine questioning. You know, most of them aren't good for anything. Just killing time. It sounded rude to me. Yeah, please forgive a detective. Olivia's a real firecracker. Hmm. Don't be shy, detective. All right, Mr. What?
Wessler is a tricky guy. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about him, so I have to be cunning. I can't just pin him against a wall. Yet. How did you feel when you heard about the blackmail? Honestly, I found it ridiculous. And now? Now I'm kind of interested. But I wouldn't call it blackmail yet. They're just empty threats. There were no demands. Good point. Thank you. Are we done? No, not quite. I'm sorry to hear that. You seem a very busy man. May I ask what you do? Eh, it's, uh, uninteresting. Would you elaborate? Eh, I got a small share in the meat substitute business. If the new product works, eh, maybe we can make your job easier. You mean reduce predation in Clawville? There are such plans, uh... If you're interested, talk to Olivia, my assistant. She's an expert in what she does, uh... Unlike me. Thank you. That's it for now. How are your alibis, Mr. Wessler? Am I a suspect? <laughs> that was fast. But thank you for asking. They're solid. Just ask Olivia. She can enlighten you in this matter, too. If you're curious. No need. And no, you're not a suspect. Yet. No more than everyone else in Clawville. That's, uh, reassuring. Wessler is tougher than I thought. And he's secretive. It's time to gently beat around the bush. Were there any similar incidents in Natasha's past? I mean... Threats, blackmail, enemies, or insane fans. Psychopath pianists, perhaps. Eh, I don't know about enemies, but she's a celebrity. A star shining bright in Clawville's night sky. Do you understand? She gets endless fan mail. It could be anybody. Eh, I wouldn't overreact. Natasha doesn't feel that way. I've noticed. Do you think one of her fans is the culprit? Someone who can't take rejection, maybe? Why not? It's quite common. It's a typical motive, indeed. Any ideas who it could be? Yeah. Attorney General Hantaro is obsessed with Natasha. But he's, uh, more like the kiss on the hand, flowers bowing type. Throwing bricks through the window is not his style. I can't think of anybody else. Or rather, I can think of everybody else. About half the city, actually. I get it. The mob boss and the pussycat, eh? How did you even meet? Huh? Are you trying to piss me off, Corpora, so I accidentally let some big secret slip out, huh? A simple answer would work. <sighs> you know, Natasha, she's both connoisseur and muse. Uh, uh, so, uh, how was it? Uh, uh, when was it exactly? You don't remember. That's strange. Ah, uh, yeah. The millions, of course. It was like another lifetime. It happened right here. Only this place was called the millions back then. <laughs> She was a dancer. Behind the scenes, I arranged opportunities for her on the big stage. Yeah, maybe she still doesn't know it was me. Then one day, I invited her for a drink with a promise that if she was willing to meet me, I'd buy the place for her. I guess she was willing. The next day, 
She had the club in her name. Well, that is romantic. Eh, there are many kinds of romance, Birdman. There's cheap and there's expensive. You get what you can afford. Do you live in the same house as Natasha? Oh, you're really something. Natasha's a free woman, but mostly, yeah, at my place in Gold Town. But she has her own kind of a weekend house. Hmm. How often does she use the weekend house? Yeah, every other weekend, roughly. I see. That's very important information. Yeah, if you say so. So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Yeah, I know what you're getting at, but I'm 100% sure of her loyalty. She's gone out very rarely since this started, and mostly in my company. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if you do, but uh, in our social circles, banquets and dinners are frequent. Hmm, illegal gambling nights. You got me there. Yeah, you're right. Natasha is crazy about the roulette wheel. Always putting it all on the red, right? Yeah, you're a real rotten bastard, Sonny. Although, yeah, always on the red. You're right. So, can we meet your lady? Mm, I don't see why not. But first, please, listen to her sing. She's on soon. Thank you for your time. We'll be seeing you. I have no doubt about that, unfortunately. Hey, uh, we should, uh, grab a coffee or something, Olivia. You know, for old time's sake. Pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Goodbye. Oh. Please, take a seat. The show's gonna start soon. That was, um, unique. Oh, that is cute. Nobody has ever given me such a unique compliment before. Uh, forgive me, my name is Santino Featherland. <laughs> I thought so. You look more or less like I imagined. More or less? Sometimes less is more, Mr. Featherland. Ahem. <clears throat> you were amazing, dear. As always. Could you be my little furball and fetch me a cocktail? But of course. Ibn will be back soon. We'll have a few minutes to talk. Then he'll end the conversation and throw you both out. 
<laughs> With all due respect, ma'am, we're not that easy to get rid of. Doesn't matter who's trying, believe me. <sighs> Doesn't matter, he'll do it. That's why I'm telling you. I don't want a scene. My room's upstairs. Meet me there in 20 minutes. Come alone, Sonny. You'd be too conspicuous otherwise. Hey, I understand. You know, they call him Target Marty at the station. I don't have time, Mr. Featherland. Oh, sure thing, Natasha. I'll come to your room. Three knocks, a short pause, then another three. I'll be waiting. Go, before he comes back. I knew she was trouble the first time I saw her. She wore danger like a perfume. It was simply part of her being, and it attracted me like light attracts the moth people. I wanted to be the microphone as she whispers her melodies, or the pillow she rests her feet on while reading some cheap romance. I wanted to be her nightdress, barely touching barely covering her marble skin. But I was a cop, and a lifetime wouldn't be enough to rid myself of what a woman like her hides under her makeup. Keep your distance, Sonny. Just keep your distance. a uh, unique picture and kind of daring. I admit I've never seen anything <laughs> quite like it before. Yes, I admit it's a little daring. I keep it. It evokes good memories. A precious old friend of mine. A most wonderful artist. He's got an eye, that's for sure, considering his model. Was that supposed to be some kind of compliment? I don't know. I don't compliment often. Not on purpose, anyway. Oh, you're funny. This woman's aware of her charm, and she knows how to use it. A rare and dangerous combination. This woman... You got a beautiful place here, Natasha. A peaceful little island on the ocean of madness with very classy furniture. Ibn likes me surrounded by elegant things, you know? You're an elegant thing yourself, sweetheart. Oh, that's charming. Thank you, detective. Light is the brother of darkness. More like it's lover, don't you think? Anyway, I thought I hired a detective, not a poet. I'm not a poet, Natasha. Just a fool. Oh, what an act. Light. I bet you spend a lot of your time staring into the mirror. Do you even recognize yourself? Maybe you were trying to be rude, but... You know, that's a very good question. I was just trying to be rude. Oh, really? Well, then I'm sorry. Don't mention it. So this is where the magic happens, right? The big transformation. Every woman needs a little magic. And every man needs some illusion. You're right there, Angel. This woman's aware of her charm, and she knows how to use it. A rare and dangerous combination. This woman... How do you like your bourbon, Mr. Featherland? In a glass. But thanks, I had a couple before I came. I feel like this may be a long night. I hope 
hope it doesn't bother you if I have one myself. I get offended if women don't drink in my company. Oh, you are a funny guy. So I've been told. Anyway, uh, lovely room. Yes. Look, Mr. Featherland. It's sunny. Saves us a lot of time. Okay, sunny. So, why am I here? You know, men tend to babble in my presence. It must be exhausting. It is. But you're not the type to beat around the bush. Is it too banal if I tell you it's an occupational hazard? Terribly. So can I start the unpleasant questions? I've asked you here so you can do what you do best. Really? I thought you asked because you wanted me to investigate for you. But if you'd rather be drinking... Oh, you do have a sense of humor. How reassuring. Only if I'm a bit hungover. That's usually quite common. Oh, please drop the act about being the alcoholic, heartbroken ex-cop, Sonny. It would undoubtedly suit you, but um, I've seen you scanning my room. From the second you set foot in here, you started working, and everything I say gets sorted in your brain. Am I right? That's a bit of an exaggeration, but yeah, it's something like that. Well then, Sonny, come at me. Oh, that's something I don't hear often. With pleasure. Seriously, how did you find me? Not even my boss knows where I live. Although I didn't include Ibn in my little private mission, some of his resources were still available to me. Yeah, let me guess. There's someone at the station working for him. Someone? You're so cute when you're playing naive. Have you ever had dealings with the police? Not in this city. And otherwise? Does it really matter, Mr. Featherland? Maybe it does. More than a little. I'm afraid you'll have to unravel that thread yourself. But you will find nothing but a dead end. Natasha is a confident woman. I can exploit that. But I must be careful. Every part of her oozes danger. That was a remarkable performance. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Do you perform here frequently? You're also the owner, if I'm not mistaken. Sadly, I don't have the time. But the stage still calls my name. And I perform just a few times a year. And always with a new song. So that was all the excitement. I have many admirers, if that's what you mean. Yes. The place is very elegant. And uh, so's your room. Why, thank you. I kind of feel like I'm in a museum. Well... That depends on the kind of museum. The kind with nice things. Oh. Suspiciously nice things. Just like you. Do you think I'm suspicious? We'll see about that. Try me. Do you think one of your admirers might be behind the threat? Those who admire me usually idolize me. No, I don't think it's one of them. You know, the soul of an animal is extremely complicated. Sometimes all it takes is a bad look or some small rejection to turn admiration into hate. That's a stillborn theory. No one hates me if they once loved me, Mr. Detective. Ah, I see. Do 
Do you have any material evidence concerning the threats? You may think I'm irresponsible, but I didn't keep any of it. I simply couldn't bear to look at them. Didn't you think maybe the police would need it? I didn't think I needed the police. Moreover, do you think the girlfriend of Ibn Wessler could ever turn to the cops? I see. So, what about me? How do I come into the picture? It sounds ridiculous, but you're my last hope. That does sound ridiculous, but I accept my ego and uh, old habits. You can't do anything else, can you? Something like that. A leopard can't change its spots. Deep behind the diamond skin lies the truth. It doesn't matter how hard Natasha's trying to hide it. She's scared. Now I must concentrate to finally find out what I want to know. What was in those threats, exactly? The message itself is not a threat. It's just a word. But a word again and again is threatening. Exactly. So? You really don't have any idea? Which word could be used for a woman like me? I guess I do. Yes, I think I know what it could be. Whore. <clears throat> Cat got your tongue? Am I right? You heard it. I said what you were thinking. And yes, that was in the message. That was printed on the paper and painted on my wall. In giant red letters. Well, thank you for your honesty. What about Filmar? Is he here because of you? Mr. Lowe helped me before, and yes, he was the first I approached. You've managed to curb my enthusiasm a little. Doesn't keeping two irons in the fire give me a better chance? But you don't have to worry. He didn't find anything. And he's not interested anymore, no matter how much I offer to pay him. Why? You'll have to ask him. I think I'll do that. A dark shadow from the past. An ex-lover. A husband, maybe. I'm surprised you asked that just now. Well, I have my habits. Some call my methods peculiar. What a curious way to put it. I'm a curious kind of fellow. So? I've never been married, and I don't really have any serious relationship before Hobart. A more dangerous, not serious relationship, maybe? I've never been with anyone long enough for them to hate me. Love is just another face of hate. So is hate a face of love, then? I guess. Were you on the run? No, Mr. Featherland. I came to Clawville with a clean slate. And I'd like to believe it will stay that way. You mean as the girlfriend of Ibn Wessler, the biggest mob boss in Clawville? Yeah, good luck with that. Natasha is a mysterious woman, but I must gouge out at least one of her secrets. Enough games. It's time to know why I'm here. Let's stop beating about the bush. How do you know Molly? I'm prepared for that question, but it's still not easy. You knew very well that if you threw in the name of my wife, I'd come to you no matter how vague and suspicious the case was. I just want to know if you're simply a manipulator or you're really that desperate. I really know her. I'm not lying. Oh, really? How? Were you a nurse too? Forgive me, but I don't think so. Don't be rude and so cynical, Sonny. I'm sorry, but that's me when feline claws are at my throat. Molly is an old and good friend of mine. She has nothing to do with this, but I knew that if I didn't mention it to you, you wouldn't have come. Yeah, Natasha, you're right there. I knew you were a decent fowl, that you would help me. That's what you're famous for. 
Don't go there. Flattery doesn't work. Look, forgive me. I shouldn't have brought your wife into this. You're right, you shouldn't have. But to be honest, I don't think she's my wife anymore. On paper she is, but I haven't seen her in years. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Really? I did. I knew I checked you out before I sent Deborah. Cluck me. This case is getting more and more intriguing. You played me from the start, didn't you? It wasn't my intention. I'm an old cock, Natasha. I've played too many of these games, and I've been on the losing side often enough. So, you're going to walk away? You're damn right. I don't know if it's worth it for me. Look, Sonny, money's not an issue. Oh yeah, your fawn had already mentioned that. But unfortunately, it'll be hard to spend all that dough when I'm dead. Dead? Don't even say that. Do you have a gun? Me? Of course you, Natasha. Do you have it on you? Not at the moment. Well, let me give you some advice. Keep it with you, always. Maybe in your purse. You, you don't think they, whoever they are, would hurt me? Don't be naive, Natasha. You're right. I'll keep it with me. I don't want to scare you, but two cops snooping around can mess something like this up, even if it's just two roosters. You'll keep snooping? Thank you, Sonny. Maybe you're getting yourself into even deeper trouble with me. Thank me when this is all over. Natasha is a confident woman. That was a remarkable... The place is... Do you think one... Do you have any deep behind the diamond skin? What was in those... No one's ever seen the culprit, not even a shadow. That's one of the most curious things. Ibn has men everywhere, literally. My shadows, ghosts in every alley. But no one saw anything. One of them could be the culprit. Ibn pays his animals well, and he's the most dangerous man in the city. A combination that nullifies your theory, I believe? Maybe, ma'am. Love is capable of insane miracles and miraculous insanity. What poetry. Did you ever think about writing a book? Never. I'm afraid I'd learn too much about myself. Maybe that's the point. I would read about you. Not like the chicken police pulled fiction. Furry hell. Do you read that trash? Like everyone else in the city. Oh, great. I think it's flattering, even as badly written tales of heroes in the gutter. You enjoy it? Well, just a little, Sonny. Just a little. A dark shadow from the past. Natasha is a mysterious woman. Let's stop beating about the bush. You played me from the start. Just one more thing, Sonny. Natasha? Please, come to 37 Rochester Street in Flower Town tonight. I'd like to show you something that could be of a great help in your investigation. I was afraid this was coming. Why there? Why not here and now? It's something I keep hidden there. 
I won't take the risk of Ibn or one of his men seeing it. Isn't Ibn too dangerous to keep secrets from? Sunny, a woman is naked without her secrets. Hmm. I knew you would understand. Oh yeah, I understand everything. So, when do we meet? The night is almost over. I'll be there in an hour. Don't be early, and don't be too late. Look, Natasha, you know... Please, this is very important to me. Sure, I get it. I'll be there. Thank you. Until later, Natasha. Goodbye, Sonny. This woman's a whip. Do you have a light, Natasha? I'm sorry. I've never smoked. Really? That's very uncommon in your line of work. It was uncommon in all my previous lines of work, too. But I promise that next time we meet, I'll bring you a box of matches. <laughs> I might take you up on that. <laughs> No trouble at all. Do you have a... Why did you name it the Czar Club when you took over? It was the millions before. Maybe you can guess my origins from my name and my accent. I come from the Eastern Tsardom of Slavonia. We are quite respectful of our leaders. Do you feel that's not the case here in Clawville? Here? No. Absolutely not, Mr. Featherland. Many here don't even know the name of their king. To them, he's only the Fox King. It's quite disrespectful and rude. There's some truth to that. Where I'm from, we choose our leaders ourselves. And whatever they do later, we proudly stand by our decision. So that's why the name, in respect to your country. Don't take me for so sentimental. It's only partly the reason. We lived there until I was 14. Then we, we had to flee. It doesn't matter why. In the end, I was the only one who made it to Clawville. So the name isn't because of nostalgia or respect. More like a reminder. So, why, Deborah? I could not seek you out in person. It was risky even to send Debbie. It's too late now. Mr. Wessler is aware of my little investigation. I'm sorry I got her mixed up in this. She's a lovely girl. She looked like one. May I be brash? It's New Year's Eve. Everything goes tonight. Ibn, do you love him? In my own way? Yes, I do. Whatever that means. You can't understand this, Sonny. There are women who can't actually love. Not like they're supposed to. But that doesn't mean they don't love however they can. That's not a real answer, is it? <laughs> if you only accept yes or no, then yes, I love him. So this message... I'm sorry I had to upset you, Sonny. But if I didn't take that step, would we be talking here right now? Well, probably I'd be dead drunk and counting sheepmen in my dreams. I'm good for you, you see? Yeah. You're a real angel. Why just me? What's wrong with my partner? Nothing in the world. I just like to be discreet. I wanted to talk to you in private because of uh, Molly. Uh, well, uh, thank you for your discretion. It, uh, it means a lot. Don't mention it. So, who's this Olivia bird? I know well what you're curious about. You want to know if she's sleeping with Ibn. The thought may have crossed my mind. 
you men. But guess what? Maybe she does. You don't care? As long as he loves me, I don't. Well, that's your business. What do you know about her? She's not the one threatening me. You can be sure of that. I know that was your next thought. The lovesick assistant is jealous of the boss's girlfriend and wants to flick her out of the picture. It would even stand up, but Olivia doesn't have feelings. If she let Eben sleep with her, it's because she does what he says, nothing more. That was so honest and raw, I'm inclined to believe it. Aren't you supposed to be waiting in the car? I was bored to tears, Sonny. I also thought maybe something happened to you. You thought Natasha had eaten me alive, huh? Well, who knows? You're such a fragile little thing. I'm too old for this, Marty. Then next time, leave the dangerous predators to me. I didn't mean that, Marty. I meant you. Oh. Wessler's secretary, Olivia Blackwig. 
You think she knows anything useful? It's worth a try, Marty, but let me do the talking. She's not very fond of you. What can I say? You know, back in the day, I flew from tree to tree. I was a free bird. Maybe I was playing her a bit. What a lovely kitten. Remember that other case? Don't be shy, Sonny. Hey, Big Nose, where did Mr. Wessler go? Unfortunately, I don't know, Big Faith, but I wouldn't tell you even if I did. Really? Say, did anyone ever tell you that you're an irritating piece of sh? <clears throat> Anything else, dear sirs? Have a good night, long face. <sighs> Creepy little squirrel girl. Isn't that Filmar standing over there at the bar? Ah, uh, you're right. That time to say hi. Isn't that... So... Have you talked to Natasha? In fact, yes. She was, uh, kind of mysterious. I bet she was. You know, I've never abandoned a case before. Not voluntarily, anyway. But that woman... You're, uh, too old for this shit, huh? <laughs> As you say, pal. That's exactly how I felt, too. Before you leave, take this and examine it closely. What is it? The reason I've decided all of this is not worth it for me. Wow, that sounds encouraging. Take care of yourselves, guys. This case, maybe it goes deeper than you'd think. Oh, that makes my feathers stand on end. Ah, old croakers. You're safe while I'm here. Okay, okay, I didn't say anything. Take care of yourself, old bird. <laughs> You're one to talk. The truth is, Ibn's a dirty bastard. But he's likable. It must be his charisma that snared Natasha. Maybe there's more to it than simple wild love. Who knows? Animals commit the dirtiest of deeds for wild love. Hmm, you've got a point. Wonderful girl. Either I'm gonna kill her or I'm beginning to like her. That's funny, I swear I've heard that before. Huh, to be honest, me too. So, Natasha invited us to her weekend house. That's either very good news or very bad news. 50%. That's not that bad, is it? That's an admirable attitude. Attitude, yeah, he's got that. Most of the time, I think that's all he's got. Hey! Who is this woman anyway? She's like Ibn Shadow. Nobody knows anything about her. I don't know if she has anything to do with the case, but it's worth keeping an eye on her anyway. More women, more trouble. You already fantasizing. <sighs> Even the sight of young women make me tired. Anyway, most people say she's the rat's lover too. But next to Natasha, I doubt he'd want her. Anyway, the pussycat would have already torn her to shreds. Could be. Excuse me, pal. My name is Santino Featherland. Eh? Uh, Gabriel, what do you want, chickens? Uh, do you happen to know where Mr. Wessler went? Do you take me for a fool? Get out of here while I'm in a good mood, birds. Okay. Thanks, big boy. Listen, pal, uh, maybe if, uh, 
Did I stutter, chicken? Get lost. Daddy, darling. We stepped into it, didn't we? We stepped... Of all that's furry, what kind of a list is this? Exactly. I have no idea, but I don't even want to find out. Those names, all top dogs. Maybe they play cards together. Sure, that's very likely. Anyway, I pried this list out of a dead man's hand. Somebody dropped him outside the forest, a few miles from the Wessler residence. I should have known she was keeping secrets. Keeping secrets? She's the secret herself. Thanks, Filmar. This could be important. Ah, uh, don't thank me. Maybe I've just signed your death warrant. Oh, thank you, sir. Aw, oh, shut up, Marty. Calling Boo's darling, it's kind of weird, don't you think? Says someone who calls his gun collection his harem. Touché. I'll shut it. Good birdie. Oh, it's you. How can I help you, gentlemen? Look, we really don't want to dig into your personal life, but... But what exactly is my relationship with Mr. Wessler? And how close am I to him? You don't beat around the bush, ma'am. Well, actually, I remember. I don't have time to chit-chat, Mr. Featherland. So yes, I'm not one to beat around the bush. And no, I'm not sleeping with Mr. Wessler. <laughs> well, thanks for the uh, quick and straight answer. Anything else? Look, uh, Olivia, you know, last time... Please, Marty, there's no need. Yes, there is. I know I wasn't a gentleman, and I know I should have called you, but I was young and... You don't have to explain. I wasn't waiting long for your call. I forgot about it fast. That's good to hear, I suppose. I'm sorry we disturbed you. Not at all. Have a nice evening, gentlemen. Do you come here often, Olivia? No, not really. Well, okay. Thanks. You're welcome. You know, Ibn's not as ferocious as you'd think. On the contrary, he's become very different recently. I heard. Don't you find that weird? A sudden change of heart? Sometimes an animal just has enough. Fed up and wants a change. I deeply respect that. Well, thank you for your honesty, ma'am. What's your relationship with Miss Natasha Katsenko? We've talked a bit, that's all. There's no uh, tension between you? You know, the pretty secretary. Well, thank you for your compliment, Mr. Featherland. No, no tension. Natasha's an intelligent woman. I respect her. Is that mutual? That I can't tell. If I'm not mistaken, Natasha has a weekend house in Flowerville. Yeah, that's right. Can you tell me anything about it? I've never been there. Allegedly, it's beautiful. Elegant and luxurious. Just like Natasha herself. I'm sorry we disturbed you. Listen, pal. Um, Did I stutter? What a lovely kitten.
You know, Sonny, I love Laura, and I swear I'm gonna marry her one day. But I gotta admit, that Natasha woman has turned even my head. I wouldn't mess with Laura if I were you, pal. Wouldn't even think about it. There are few women as dangerous as her, and not just because she's a predator. Ah, you're telling me. The moon hangs in the sky. I don't know, Sonny. What exactly are we doing here? Let's hope we can learn something about Natasha and Ibn by sniffing around before we visit that weekend house in Flowerville. Learn something? From Phyllis and Roy's? Well, I wasn't exactly thinking about them. Yeah, figures. Do you remember our old squad car? That ended up in a swamp? Huh, I could never get over that. It was the best partner I ever had. That's, uh, good to know, boss. Truth hurts, pal. Never mind, I'll live with it. What was its name? The old car, I mean. Bessie? Uh, Nessa? Tessa. You know, like my daughter. I knew your daughter's Tessa, but... Oh, wait, did you name your daughter after our old car? Why, what's wrong with that? Even this car reminds me of Tessa. Are those two gonna stand out here all night long? I don't know, but I wouldn't put it past them. They're operating by some incomprehensible logic, at least for simple birds like us. I wish we had the smarts to understand. Maybe one day, Marty. Maybe one day. Do you remember Operation Double Spike, Marty? <laughs> Furry gods, how could I ever forget? The whole PD was laughing at the poor bastards for weeks. Every workplace needs guys like these. Nothing would be the same without them. How's it going tonight, boys? Uneventful so far, Sonny. But now that you're rolling together again, I suppose we'll have some excitement to look forward to. What do you mean? 
Are you kidding? Last time you shot up a theater, and if I remember correctly, each other. <laughs> that was a uh, complicated evening. I sure <laughs> complicated. Do you want to hear some juicy gossip, boys? Always. Deputy Malloy got so drunk, he fell asleep on the toilet. <laughs> it took them an hour to find him. Stupid oaf. So that's why Blood Boil was here. Yeah, hi. And he's in a pretty sour mood because he had to come in on New Year's Eve. Just our luck. No, no, no. Your luck is that he's too busy to care about you two lovers right now. <laughs> right now? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, keep up the good work, boys. Or this hanging around thing you do. Thanks, chickens. Honor, strength, and unity. Pigs, ruffians, and vigilantes. Honor, strength, pigs, ruff... Honor, pigs, ruff... That wasn't us, right? Not that one, Marty. Yeah, honestly, sometimes I find it difficult to keep track of all the places we wrecked during our ten years together. Just nine, Marty. Nine. Why aren't we on this poster next to Blood Boil? Because he hates us, Marty. Oh yeah, right. You would have looked kinda great on that poster. Hey, thanks. There's a theory that the Foundation War was a hoax. That the reptiles deliberately kept in the background, but in reality, they're the ones controlling the city from the underground even now. What? Where did you hear that? I'd never heard such sheep shit before. I read it in Tomorrow's Word. That's a pretty prestigious newspaper. I wouldn't use that trash to wipe my cloaca, Marty. It'll rot your brain. Well, at least I read something other than the labels on liquor bottles. Hey, that was a bit below the belt. Yep, but true. You got me. It's a very beautiful crest. Yeah, it is. Just like the city. From afar, at least. It's a very beautiful... Yeah, it is. Good old Bosco's slowly becoming the same piece of furniture we are. Sure. You remember when he was just a little green lap dog? For a while, we even had to babysit him. He always was a talented little pooch, I have to admit. But the filth that seeped into everything in Clawville has reached him, too. It reaches everyone one way or another, right? One way or another, it does, Marty. You had a fight once, didn't you? At one of the winter solstice parties. Yeah, we both drank too much. It was over a manatee named Margaret. That was before Laura, of course. I haven't seen many fights that memorable in my life. Yeah, and the girl didn't go with either of us. She was a wise manatee. Is it worth talking to him? Who knows? Maybe he heard something interesting. Hey, big guy. Hey, Cox. What's up? Back here so soon? Did you get nostalgic all of a sudden, Sonny? I'd rather be anywhere else than here, Bosco. But we're sniffing around on a case. Hoo-hoo. Are you trespassing again? Who? Us? What are you thinking? Ah, uh, just an old case. Still open. Not official, but not active either. We're not bothering anyone. You know, old habits die hard. I know, I know. I'm just messing with you. So, how can I help you? The boss? 
he's not in a good mood. Malloy got so drunk he pissed himself. And we just put the cherry on top, huh? Mostly you, Sonny. No offense. I'm taken. I'm used to it. Everything rolls right off my feathers. Don't go stirring up a shitstorm, okay? We're gonna have enough on our plates tonight. We'll do what we can, Bosco, but I can't promise anything. Don't go stir. Do you still remember, Philmar? Do you mean Philip? Of course I remember. He's got quite the reputation with that Philmar alias. We just met him. Small world, huh? Do you know what he's up to these days? Yeah, as far as I know, he's investigating petty blackmail cases and sneaking after poor bastards cheating on their wives. Anything else? Did he get mixed up in something that stirred up a storm recently? Yeah, I don't know about that. We haven't seen him at the PD for a while. He's usually a frequent visitor. Why? Did he run into some fishy business again? Possible, Bosco. But I'm not sure he'd want to make the same mistake. Wise decision. Listen, Bosco. What do you make of this list? Maybe it's the guest list of some fancy ball. These are some rather influential names, the ones I recognize anyway. Movie stars, politicians, a few names from the Council of Twelve even, if I'm not mistaken. You're not. Are you blackmailing them? Because if you are, I'll gladly accept a nice big juicy bone in exchange for my silence. Stop screwing around, Bosco. It has nothing to do with our case. Which is what, exactly? Mm, we're still not gonna tell you. Listen, Bosco, what have you heard about that singer, Natasha Katsenko? <laughs> you mean that little bimbo fooling around with Ibn Wessler? They say she's the jackpot, but I've never been into cats, you know. You couldn't be more racist if you tried, Bosco. <laughs> don't misunderstand me. I don't have a problem with cats at all. I'm simply allergic to them. I can't stand being around them. I don't even take cases with cats. Good for you. I should have used that excuse myself. Why? Is your investigation related to her? What? No, of course not. We, we just came from her show. That's why I asked. <laughs> and what's she like? Well, I guess your cat allergy would go away for the rest of your life if you met her. <laughs> really? Uh, maybe I'll have a go and see for myself one day. Don't go stirring up a shit. Do you remember Monica ever going on holiday? Honestly? I can't recall. Sometimes I can't decide if it's admirable or if I feel sorry for her. Maybe a bit of both. But is it selfish to say I'd be hurt if one day I didn't find her here? Yeah, I feel the same. That's all right then. You know, if there's anyone who knows anything about anything, it's going to be her. Kind of long-winded, but I agree. So soon? That was fast. Almost a record. Sorry, Mon. We're just here for a little uh, info. When are you not here for that, boys? How about wish me a happy birthday for a change? D what? Is it your birthday today? Of course not. Don't be silly, Marty. You know exactly when it is. We've talked about it a dozen times. Yeah, <laughs> of course I know. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, could you help us with this and that? Of course, boys, but be quick about it. I'm in over my head with paperwork and blood boils breathing down my neck. We'll be quick like a hurricane. You're very lucky, boys. You just missed the boss by three minutes. Right now, he's trying to get Malloy out of the toilet. Still can't hold his liquor, huh? Neither on or off duty, but today he is sloshed. Well, he's a water buffalo, isn't he? He knows how to swim. Uh, no, Sonny, just a buffalo. The two are totally different things. Listen, doll, we have some questions. 
Make it quick, boys. I'm busy. Guess who we met today in person, Mom? King Hector III? Even better. The one who commands the king. Wait a minute. Hobart Wessler? Damn right. Hobart Ibn Wessler in the flesh. Wow. And you're still alive. That's quite an accomplishment. But seriously, have you heard that he wants to get out of the black market business? Allegedly, he's trying to clear his name with some kind of new meat substitute. His name's gonna be rather difficult to clear. It's a heroic and impossible venture. I haven't heard about it, but it's an interesting addition to what I know. Which is? Eben's been acting very strange lately, and he left most of his business dealings to one of his goons, Mickey. Also known as the Butcher, the Mongrel, and the Slayer. Yeah, we once had the pleasure of meeting him. That's all I know, boys. I know it's not very much, but it's something, I guess. I'll keep my ears open. Thanks, Mon. Listen, Mon, a reliable old friend shoved this into my hand. Could you take a quick glance at it? Hmm, quite an imposing list. What could those numbers mean? It could be a date, even, but no, this is something else. That's what we were thinking, too, and we got nowhere. But you see a lot of documents. So, is there anything familiar about this? Unfortunately not, boys. The names are imposing indeed, but based on this, it could be almost anything. The richest of the rich get together on all kinds of excuses. Huh, it must be a secret cult. It could be, of course, but also anything else. I'm sorry I couldn't help you more. Ah, oh, don't mention it, Mon. Thanks for your time. Or... wait a minute. There is something... No, stop teasing us, Mon. I'm sure you've noticed that all the names in the list are men, right? Yeah, uh, of course we noticed. Uh, thanks for the observation, Monica. Don't mention it. I'm just a receptionist. We saw a pretty good show at the Tsar Club tonight. Good for you, I guess. Natasha? Natasha. She performed a new song. She also sang about why she called us there. Or rather, me. And? That's confidential, Dollface. Anyway, I can't help wondering about that woman. Her past is a mystery. And I couldn't draw much out of her in person, either. Women like her always have something to hide, Sonny. I think that's exactly what makes men fall head over heels for them. Well, I know another broad who's all mysterious. Oh yeah? What's her name? I'll look her up if we have a file on her. Naughty, shut up. Oh, you mean me, right? All mysterious, full of secrets and grace. I didn't even hear that, Marty. <laughs> Do we have a file on a woman called Olivia Blackwig? She's currently working as Ibn Wessler's assistant. Hmm, we don't have a file on her, but there are a few Blackwigs that could be related to her. Mountain Goat, Crow, or Cayman? Crow, around 30 to 35. A very pretty socialite. Maybe we have a catch then. Theodore Blackwig was a rather influential banker until he went bankrupt. He died a few years back, but his daughter could have ended up in the same social circles as Eben. And since they lost their money, she took a job as his assistant. Yeah, it would fit the picture. But it's a big city, Sonny. There may be more than one Crow family with a Blackwig name living here. Hmm. Thanks, Mon. I'm glad I could help, boys, as always. If it doesn't take a lot of my time, that is. We know, we know. We're not even here anymore. Listen, doll, we have... Don't drink that shit, Marty. It's bad for your health. Why is it always a lion? Lions are lazy, dull, good-for-nothing creatures. Hey, stop talking like that. It's disrespectful. Why? Aren't I right? Not every lion's the same. Just like not every rooster is an asshole like you. You got me. Sometimes I think everything would be so much better if cops didn't have guns. That's almost surreal coming from you, Marty. Don't get me wrong, I love guns. 
I became a cop because of guns. But sometimes I feel if we didn't have guns, criminals wouldn't have them either. The chicken or the egg, huh? Unfortunately, I don't agree with you. If you point flowers instead of a gun at a total nutcase, he's still gonna shoot you. I can't even remember why I became a cop. Miss Jardine, one of the seven female officers of the Clawville PD. Miss Jard... Officer Barkman, unwavering cop and a slavering beast. Uh-uh. Blood boils in there, and I don't want to run into him. I wholeheartedly agree, partner. Let's avoid the whole office section as much as possible. Blood boils in there somewhere. It's best to avoid him before he finds some reason to lock us in. You took the words out of my beak, boss. You seem unsure. Really? Yeah, I think I'm just tired. You know, Laura and I have been fighting recently and I've been sleeping on the couch. Yeah, well it shows. Thanks. You always know how to cheer someone up. Laura didn't throw you out, did she? No, nothing like that. It's uh, just a little unrest. Uh-huh, I see. Marty looks kind of run down today, but he's still in better shape than I am. It may not be a good time to say this, but I've got a bad feeling about tonight. You could have told me about that sooner, Sonny. You can still turn back. Stay here and keep wasting ammo. Like hell. Whatever insane shit's waiting for us, it's way better than dying of boredom. Well, I'm sure we won't be bored. I hope not. Don't you want to practice a little? You must be all rusty after such a long hiatus. If you want to know, I sometimes practice at the empty hotel. Leslie lets you shoot up the place. Lewis. And no, he doesn't. But there's a room that one of the gorillas of the Castilla clan had totally trashed. He won't notice one or two holes. Ah, clever. Shall we go, or do you want to stay and shoot a bit? I don't know. But don't worry, we'll soon be on our way. Whatever you want, boss bird. Don't forget to keep your gun clean, Marty. Hey, I take them all apart every day, clean and oil them, if you want to know. I didn't want to know. No use crying over spilt milk. Which one of them was first, peace or guns? You mean, why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know. Which one of them was... You sure we won't need Layla? You call this monster Layla? She's not a monster, Sonny. If you know how to treat her right, she's a real ballerina. Uh-huh. I believe you, pal, but we're not taking her. Oh. And what if... No, Marty. There's no way in hell we're taking a Tommy gun with us. Ugh. All right. Nice cup of coffee a la Zip, huh? We're not here for the coffee, Marty. Zip always knows more than what he lets on. It'd be worth interrogating the old trash panda. If he forgave us for wrecking his joint last time. He'll never forgive us, Marty, but we helped him out of trouble so many times he's not gonna have any choice. I hope you're right, old bird. Once this broken down old car was new and shot. Ah, is that the Chitin Blues?
This makes the bile rise in my wattle. Yeah, me too. Jeez, boys. Out of 2,000 joints in the city, you had to end up here, huh? Hello to you, too, Zip. How's it hanging? I had no problems. Until now. Ah, oh, don't be such a drama queen. We just want to ask you a couple of questions, then we're out of here. And we won't even trash your place this time. What do you say? I say let's get it over with very, very quickly, chickens. Relax, pal. We'll be as fast as a hummingbird. I'm not your pal, and you're as far from a hummingbird as I'm from a polar bear. Oh, come on, Zip. Don't be so hard on yourself. Damn it, what's the scribbler doing here? Sniffing some juicy story. I think I still owe him a great big left hook. What did he do this time? Oh, nothing. Just since I first met him, I wanted to punch him in the face. I can understand that. We don't have to talk to him, right? Impossible to avoid, Marty. Not if he hasn't gone blind or deaf since we last saw him. Hello, Timothy. Scribblers don't celebrate New Year's. Hello, boys. <laughs> what a pleasure to see you. Answering your question, no, not really. Not me, anyway. I'm always where the story is. Mm-hmm. And where's the story now? I can't see it anywhere. It just stepped through the door, pal. Oh, you mean us. Well, I think I'll have to disappoint you. The chicken police are back together? I, I can't let that go without an ink stain, am I right? No, Timmy, you can. We're not working, we're just having a little fun, that's all. Mm, I'm not buying that, boys. You'll have to, Tim. Eh, we'll see about that. Is that rag you work for still around, Tim? You mean the most read and highest ranking newspaper of the city, the Clawville Chronicle? Oh yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> I see that you still have your famous sense of humor, Sonny. Such a joy. <laughs> yeah, I do. Timothy Saltwater is the meddler journalist of the Clawville Chronicle. That wouldn't be a problem in itself, but unfortunately, he's a huge fan and the architect of the chicken police legend. So... How about you tell me what you're really doing here? Not a chance, Timbo. The truth is, we're already leaving. Sorry, pal. Maybe next time. So... Wise words, pal. Gods, he's in even worse shape than the last time we saw him. Well, Marty, aging is like that. And while we're at it, looks like you put on a few pounds. What? what? Who, me? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I weigh exactly the same as I've always done. Yeah, sure. I can see we're not particularly welcome. I wonder why. So? Out with it. Stop winding me up. I'm almost consumed by all this excitement. We've just come from the Czar Club, Zip. Who do you think we met? Uh, if I can guess one, I'd say, uh, was it His Majesty Hobart Ibn Wessler, the rat prime himself? That on, pal. What a surprise. So, what do you want to know? Just because I don't know anything. Of course you don't. Just a couple questions. Go on, boys. Hurry up, will you? What's up, Zip? Quiet night, I see. And what's Timothy doing here? That's exactly what I asked him when he wound up here. But yeah, he's a regular nowadays. He must be sniffing some kind of story about the hive. About the riots? Have they reached here already? I ain't seen nothing. 
More cops around, yeah, as you can see for yourself. We're not on duty, Zip. It's still the same. A cop's a cop. A lot come by, but besides beating up bugs, nothing much happens. It will, Zip. I can sniff it in the air. If you say so, Sonny, your sense of smell is better than mine. <laughs> Maybe once. Huh? What more do you want? Is it forbidden to stand around at your place? Go stand around somewhere else in the city. Huh? What? Look what we found, Zip. Furry hell! Who'd you beat to death for that? Beat to death? Who do you think we are? We simply confiscated it. Yo, sneaky broilers. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. It's worth three times that. Aw, oh, come on. Give me a break. Tough luck, Trash Panda. We also ran into Filmar. Filmar? Who's that? A grumpy old raggedy ass hawk. His manners are even worse than mine. Ring a bell? You mean Marlo? Was Marlo. Now he goes by Filmar Low. Ah, oh, I see. So that means he's still alive? Well, I'm almost not surprised. The old guy has a reputation of being indestructible, huh? He is. And he gave us something that could mean something. Look at this, Zip. Holy crap, what's this? The guest list at a king's birthday party. Hey, that's not even a bad guess. What do you make of it? This piece of paper's from so high up where I've never been myself, boys. So don't ask me. We spoke to Natasha. She's scared. Well, it's not good life insurance to be the girl of the most powerful gangster in the city. It's not about that. Someone's been writing offensive messages to her. She feels threatened. I only know that every second husband in the city wants to have her, and every second wife wants to wring her neck because of that. Nothing else. Thanks, Zip, but we're not any further ahead. But not further back, right? <laughs>